Welcome. I'm Sam Gardner. We're here with Ricardo Villar, the CEO of the Florida Cup. Uh, welcome. Thank you. You know, we're, we're so excited here at Florida Citrus Sports to have the, the Florida Cup now as part of our family and, and we're ready to get to work. And, and we thought it'd be nice to just take a few minutes to, to sit down with you and help our members and our fans and, and, you know, folks around Orlando get a better idea of who you are and what this tournament is and what it can be. Um, so, you know, if that's all right with you, we'll get no, right to it. No problem. Let's go, Sam. You know, during your playing career, I know you had you know, some other pursuits in, in education and, and with 2V or, or 2SV sports, yeah. excuse me. You know, can you d tell me a little bit about what that effort was and is and, and how that kind of played into your development? Okay, no, yeah. So because I, it was so difficult for me and I had a friend that also was offered to go to college back in the day and he took two years later because nobody would help. I mean, internet was, you know, I didn't have email until I was in college. So talking 94, 95, and uh, it was difficult for you unless you studied in a bilingual school or like an English American school to go abroad and study. Uh, we decided to, after we finished our college careers, to create a company, an agency in a way, to provide uh, preparation for student athletes, be ready to get a scholarship in the United States, shall they want to combine the sports and education like is able to, to happen here. So it was actually by luck, a bunch of college coaches were down in Brazil. They wanted to see a game because they're doing coaches education. So, coach from Wake Forest, Stanford, uh, I mean, a few, Penn State, like sure. uh, there. And then the, their uh, van broke down on <laughs> the way back from Sao Paulo to the place they were going. My house was nearby. Coach called me. We put a pizza together and some of the discussions said, you got to get players like you over to my program. And from that discussion, me and my friend and partner for years, uh, Silveira, uh, business partner since 2000 and I say five mm -hmm. began the 2SV venture we send over 1,500 kids I think we're near the 2,000 mark now from Brazil to the US and these are kids who scholarship. have scholarships right correct yeah. these are athletes um, you know that in not just soccer I mean you know swimming diving uh, tennis uh, different programs also for example here in Montverde they come to prepare before they go to college uh, we just had a kid join in North Carolina Tar Heels this week for soccer, uh, D1. So there's, you know, kids in every level that want to pursue that opportunity. We were the first ones to put, um, you know, an agency together that paved the way, made sure that if they did things right, they would be deserving to take that step and obviously win the cultural shock that you say and do well here if they're willing to, to try. So um, right attitude, a few things that you put in that program. From there... We developed for, I don't know, maybe five, six years, always with me playing. Because when you play, you train in the morning and then you either do video game in the afternoon or... So I, I developed that side of the business and Silvera was working effectively in Sao Paulo in the, in the office. How did the Florida Cup first get off the ground and, and kind of what were your expectations going into that, that first year? You've done five of them now, but the, yeah. the first year, you know, what were your trepidations? What were your concerns and, and how did it work out? So I learned quickly that Orlando, as an international destination, had two key markets, one being Brazil, the other UK. Um, I knew that there was a hunger for internationalization for international leagues. I had a connection to Bundesliga because speaking German, playing there and knowing the guys. Um, I had maybe done 10 preseasons in Germany in the middle of the mountains in Austria that I hadn't seen anybody. I always didn't like that time of my uh, every year yeah. career. Uh, and there was now a movement to you know commercial opportunities tied to a professional environment to train and it seemed that here was ideal once I saw that and started connecting all those dots it only made sense to you know understand what generates the most media and appeal in the world and to me like you said Corinthians traveling to Japan to play Chelsea 30,000 people you know what can soccer as top of mind to the whole market create a buzz around bringing their big teams which spontaneous media year-round right. to a place like Orlando and not only that playing against a team from Europe that they never get to play against because Europe is now you know the top football in the world and South America although they have the best players always mm -hmm. being sold never get a chance right. to match against that we put that together the first year I remember we we're struggling to have the balls didn't arrive in time to put in the field we we're running around in 172 countries we're broadcasting the match live. I mean, right. going up there, got this with the cameraman and making the whole run around in the field that wasn't, it was at uh, Wild World of Sports, the first one. So mm -hmm. it wasn't a stadium, right? Right. So with all that 
demand and, and appeal and from the marketplace, we saw that there was more to do. That's how we started, like a simple tournament with a vision to become an event. We're not, you know, f football in Brazil, the soccer clubs are not that famous. How can we use the, the Europeans to leverage? And at the same time, how can we create music around it, legends, uh, different events? How can we bring influencers and create an atmosphere that is not just based on, on soccer? And that whole thing started to take shape. And what we see nowadays is uh, six years later. You talked about online engagement and, and how important that has been to the Florida Cup, you know, as it's grown over the past several years. You know, tell me a little bit about your approach to marketing and engagement and digital media and why, and why you think that's been, you know, such a resounding success in the first few years. Uh, I mean, the credit is really to Adriano, you know, a.k.a. Harry Potter uh, that you guys met, mm -hmm. you know, in Brazil, still with us and supporting us. He's been the, the brain behind it. And, I mean, he's always seen that, you know, five years ago, I don't know, since we began, that we needed to be involved in the digital world uh, we, you know, for brands would be important and for obviously the event growing and for so many reasons. And it was so difficult back in the days because contracts, when you tie contracts in those events, you tie long-term contracts that they geo-block a certain area or digital is you know exclusive, so you can't you know, touch it and you're just working with that open to air TV match that millions of people will watch it. So we needed to create all those side events to now have something more to explore that was content, right? That generated content. And he created a whole thing around it where we would have to invest for the first years on bringing those influencers here, right? In sort of invest them to have a good experience if you have to and what can they do in terms of their channels because their t channels today are TV channels really I mean some of them are you know cannons in their hand uh, you're talking right. about people that came to the event that has 40 million followers on Instagram and plus um, and how can we drive uh, to a place where you know one day they're gonna be asking to come because of this key people being here and that I remember when that exactly happened in 2019 when the event was happening in January and some of the key main influencers were here and all of a sudden we're getting asked by famous people in Brazil like how can I get there right. and people started connecting and trying to understand because you have in Brazil the New Year's and Carnival and the Florida Cup came in and we put the flag right in between and it became a premium event and it's known there if you go and say it in Brazil everybody knows about it and everybody wanted to be there so by Adriano's strategy to, to create that appeal and the, 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 the drive for people to want to be here was something that exploded the, the reach. I mean, I think we reached 199 million users on Instagram last year in the event. It was just insane. Right. Uh, and uh, something that we cannot leave behind, we need to continue to do. Uh, I think that, that should just be amplified now as we open to the world, as you right. know, that we're going after global brands. But that was the whole point behind it. And, and when those guys come here, the influencers, they they come here aligned with us with what some of our goals are, but they have all the freedom and you know they can be authentic to create their own content around the event. Right. But everybody wins through that. So when it comes to this partnership with Florida Citrus Sports, you know, obviously we're very excited about it. It sounds like you're very excited about it. How how did it come to be? How did you get to know Steve Hogan and how did you kind of sell him on on what you're doing and how we can help make it bigger and better than ever? So I think number one you know, credible organization in market, I mean, for years, um, entrepreneurial spirit that Steve made very clear when he met me, a hunger for big international events and entering the soccer market, uh, which is something that I share because I want to see this bigger every year and keep growing and ultimately help support the World Cup coming to, to the market. And, you know, uh, for all those reasons, I think it was an ideal partner that, you know, I didn't, to be fair, I've been surprised that the group is so, you know, good. I think that, that they're called the Florida Citrus Sports family. I haven't met every single person yet, I think, but I, the staff I have and, um, you know, coming from where we had maybe 13 people mm -hmm. and, um, you know, sometimes doing too much in different areas and not having the whole expertise and knowing that now you will, with people that value this, you know, share this vision and willing to take to the next level. I think Steve made all that clear from the beginning to the conversations was never what are we going to do together no, it's what can we do more and bigger for this market what are my strengths what are my flaws how can we complement one another 
and it seemed that it all kind of came together nicely. And uh, now we're in the, you know, a year that COVID has thrown us a curveball, but we are all positive that it's something we have to get by, you know, and continue to push forward and make it happen because we see the big vision down the road, especially, like I said, path to the World Cup 2026 is going to be hot market for, for right. international soccer. When we talk about the growth of the event, you know, I, I think that, you know, what, what do you mean exactly? Are we, we're talking bigger teams, bigger, bigger brands that are, that are coming to be a part of it. You know, how do you kind of characterize how you see growth playing out? So I think there are 12 big clubs in the world that are at a different level, maybe top five or six that are really at a different level. But sure enough, those, those are global brands. Those are in Europe. They never had the break in the winter to come. So not to say they didn't like Ajax, for example, we brought one year, but you mean the Man United, Real Madrid, Barcelona, Bayern, you know, Liverpool, Arsenal, like so many of those clubs that you know by years of Champions League history and all that. Right. Uh, they, they only have a break in the summer. Um, naturally, there's a big investment to, to make it happen. We didn't want to go everywhere creating games we wanted to focus in Orlando focus on a technical sounded preseason for them but that we can also commercially explore and make it a big event for all the right reasons that is a win-win for us clubs call it partner clubs that are participating obviously the companies in town um, the key markets and partners that are sending people here that are willing to to come to see a you know live in a unique experience so that all you know, takes resources because if you announce something with a club like that or if you put something out in the market, I mean, we've done the research, it's sold out stadiums, you know, media value, um, content generation, appeal domestically now, and then, you know, you open a different demographics that will come to the, to the games versus what we had, which is a big international following, whether, you know, 25% coming from abroad or from a different state, another 25% and 50% local, they were still all mainly a Latin, um, you know, group, a diverse group really. It wasn't the, the true Americans that are, you know, impacted by those global brands that we had not yet brought. So that changes a lot. It opens, you, you now you bring in the world to what was already working and happening and continue hopefully to generate that appeal and media in some key places like South America, but now, bring Europe, bring Asia, bring, you know, the domestic American market in a year like this COVID, which will be important. Mm -hmm. So that's, I think, what changes. And that is a different level, it's a diff different ball game. And we're working together with the whole team, Steve and everyone aligned to to make that happen. And will be steps, you know, we have to somehow make 2022 with all, sorry, 2021 with all the restrictions and things happen, focus on media and all those things, but plant the seeds as we grow and hopefully 2022 we're back to normal. We can feel what that is and Qatar is gonna happen. Next World Cup will be in the United States, 23 on. I mean, it's just exciting, you know, times ahead of us.